Hello. Well, today I want to talk about uh, a movie that I've actually wanted to talk about for quite some time. Well, actually, uh, I've wanted to do many of these films for quite some time. Um, individually at first, but then I thought about it and wanted to do these on an anniversary a few years ago, but I kept putting it off for no real reason. Things just, you know, more uh, various films were coming out or I wanted to talk about, and as a result, these sort of kept getting delayed over and over. Um, and these are the Batman films, um, specifically the films prior to the Dark Knight trilogy, um, the live-action films. Um, uh, I wanted to do it back in <clears throat> 2019 for the, you know, 30th anniversary of the 1989 Batman film, and I wanted to do, before that one, uh, the film I'm going to talk about today. Uh, uh, but, you know, I... There's just so many other movies I really wanted to talk about. Either I had thought about doing before I did them that year, or I just, you know, just kind of... Uh, uh, films just sort of came and came out, and I thought, this is a good movie, I want to talk about it, so I did, and things just sort of got pushed back wasn't intended to be pushed back, but hey, it is what it is now, I guess. I'm finally here to talk about the other Batman films not in the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, now, not that I will never talk about the Dark Knight trilogy um, again at the at any time in the future, but, you know, I've got done a, probably like an overview, and I've talked about all of them individually, um, talked about The Dark Knight Rises quite a bit, because I really enjoy that film. Um, but I want to talk about uh, this movie, really like the first live-action feature film of Batman. And I know there were serials beforehand, but I want to talk about the feature films instead. You know, and again, live-action. I know there's a lot of animated films. Um, some of those animated films I have seen, um, either I own them or I don't, um, but I have seen them at one point. Um, and there's so many animated, uh, Batman films that it's like, be a whole, really a huge number of movies to really talk about. Um, but I just, for now, want to talk about the 1966 film starring Adam West Burt Ward. Batman the movie. Here's my old DVD, and here's the Blu-ray. Um, you know, the Blu-ray is essentially, like, it has the same stuff, basically. Um, I think there's a few more things here that isn't on here, from what I could, I'm able to see. Um, but, you know, it, these are both, uh, excellent uh, additions uh, uh, of the film and um, you know this show this uh, the 1966 show um, there. Um, you know I love the 1966 show um, that's actually what got me into Batman in the first place um, and so, you know, loving the show, uh, when I found out that uh, there was a movie that came out around the first season of the show, you know, I got it. I actually have it on VHS. I still have that VHS, though it's packed away somewhere. I wasn't really able to get to it at this time, but maybe one day I will eventually show that VHS. Um, that I have. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I this film, you know, has a collection of villains that Batman and uh, Robin 
or up against, you know, Catwoman, played by uh, Lee Merriweather instead of Julie Newmar from the show. Um, with Julie Newmar, you know, she uh, didn't find out about this movie until it was too late and she was already essentially uh, uh, doing another movie. I think that movie actually did not end up happening, or maybe that was for the third season, and which is why the appearance of Catwoman in that season was, you know, uh, Eartha Kitt. Um, I forget which instance, but either way, the reason why she's not in this film or in season three is because she was doing other films and just wasn't able to have any free time to be Catwoman again. Um, but, you know, uh, Cesar Romero, Frank Gorshin, and Burgess Meredith return as, you know, uh, Joker, Riddler, and Penguin. Uh, they're all great. Uh, Adam West and Burt Ward, of course, are incredible. Um, uh, Napier. Um, this is just a fun film. It's a really fantastic film. Um, you know, I don't want to talk too much about the overall plot, because chances are you've probably already seen it. And on the off chance you haven't seen this movie, well, if you've seen any of the episodes of uh, the 60s Batman show, it's like that, but just, you know, uh, under two hours, yeah, this uh, movie is 105 minutes, so... Yeah, about almost, like, four episodes, essentially, you get uh, in this feature-length film. Um, this is a, an incredible movie. I love this film ever since I was a kid and saw it. Still love it as an adult. Uh, it's just a movie that I really have a lot of attachment to, and while... I will say the Tim Burton Batman film was what I saw before. The Adam West show was the Batman uh, that I remember seeing first. Uh, so I have a special attachment to the show, um, which I could actually uh, talk about at some point later down in the future. But I just want to talk about the movies. And this movie, you know, because uh, at the time, you really couldn't own any of the episodes on like VHS or DVD. DVD, the DVD and Blu-ray did not come out until 2016. For its 50th anniversary, they were finally able to have some sort of deal where the entire series could be available. Um, because there was rights issues. You know, the film was from 20th Century Fox. You know, it was produced by Fox, but on like... Uh, ABC or CBS. Uh, now I'm blanking for whatever reason right now. I'm blanking on the actual network it was on. But regardless of the network, the fact it was made by Fox, it was also uh, aired on uh, ABC or CBS, there's some rights issues already. And also the fact that Warner Brothers now owns Batman and all the DC Comics characters. That brings another level of um, uh, legality into it. So, you know, for the longest time, you could really only buy uh, this movie on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and this is really all you had for a long time. And you know, the occasional rerun of the show on TV. I remember in the 90s, you know, here in America, uh, TV Land uh, would air old shows. Now, from what I've seen, they do have some old shows here and there, but it's also a lot of more newer, uh, modern shows that would be considered, I guess, in the modern era, you know, like, like 90s and 2000s that are all the shows that are done now no more episodes are made 
which doesn't totally fit what TV Land is supposed to be. Shows like Batman, uh, I Love Lucy, uh, The Munsters, Bewitched, Adam's Family, shows of the from the 50s and 60s and 70s and all that. Even I could even say the 90s. Sure, those are as time goes on, but you know, not enough time has gone on to where shows of the 2000s that could actually fit in the, you know, with what uh, uh, TV Land would have for scheduling, not enough time, I don't believe, has passed. So, on a network like that, in the 90s and early 2000s, they would have Batman quite a bit, either in the afternoon or even... <laughs> Asked, like at midnight somewhere. So, you know, it's like you'd have to hopefully be up around the time Batman was on. Um, I was young enough to where it was on uh, afternoon quite a bit, but then, you know, I would often see it, you know, in the summer. And, you know, and also in the summer if it was on at midnight, you know, I was able to stay up a little later, um, as opposed to if it's like a... In, going to school, you know, you can't really stay up late too much until, like, you get older, become like a teenager and stuff, get more responsibilities and stuff, but you have to, certain time you go to bed and all that, but uh, this show I love so much, and I just love the film, because the film, again, is like a long version of a TV show, of the TV show. A lot of things that are kind of wacky and goofy and fun that happen, happen in the show, or or in the film. Uh, so, they basically are they were able to get the show that Batman had, and the fun goofiness from that, into the, uh, into the film. And also for a lot of people, this was the first time they were able to see Batman in color, because... While it was advertised, it was in color. In the 60s, there were people who still uh, had black and white TVs. They had yet to get color TVs, you know. By the mid-60s, color TVs were starting to, you know, become uh, made and starting to get a bit of a prominence. Um, and certain shows were being filmed in color, like Batman. Um... And this show's popularity, I believe, is one of the biggest things that helped get people here in America, at least, to, to be able to get color TVs. I think that could also be said for um, other, uh, you know, the the other uh, fil uh, other countries that this show had um, helped get people to buy color TVs, but. Not that they were in conjunction with the TV companies, but it being in shot in color was a huge thing, and they were so vibrant, and in the film it's still vibrant, you know, quite a bit. The, the, the costumes still pop, and the bam, pow, wham, zap, anytime they're punching like a comic book, still just as vibrant as on the show. Yeah, I, I just really love the fun of the show. It's, I love the fun of this movie. Every time I watch this movie, it just brings back great memories. The shark repellent bat spray and the, uh, them getting the you know, Commodore Schmidt lab and all of what happens in the film. It was just so, so fun, so incredible. It's like... It's it's just always a fun movie to watch. I I just love this movie. My history with this film is something I will always cherish and love, and um, I'm happy I saw it when I did. You know, um, you know, I was still a kid when I saw it. It wasn't like I discovered it as an adult after watching the show for so many years. Um, yeah. Again, Adam West and Burt Ward do an incredible job. They're fantastic. Um, 
as always, they're always great as Batman and Robin and Bruce Wayne. Um, and also, uh, there's quite a bit of Bruce Wayne in this movie. And that does have come down to, you know, Adam West. He wanted more Bruce Wayne scenes. He wanted to be able to play out of the bat suit quite a bit. Because on the show, you know, he does, he's in the bat suit quite a bit. You know, again, it's, you know, it's called Batman. Not Bruce Wayne, but still. I kind of like that, though. Like, he wanted to see more Bruce Wayne and not just have Batman always have the spotlight. Like, just have a bit more of a spotlight on Bruce Wayne for a change. I don't think that hurts anything at all. Um, if anything, it kind of it helps and improves uh, uh, the film and also him as the actor playing Bruce Wayne Batman. And he, he, you know, he, as people like to rag on his take on the character because of, you know, now, you know, Batman was always supposed to be dark, but in this incarnation, he's more campy and light. He, he, he did a great job playing the character, as did Burt Ward as Dick Grayson Robin. You know, everybody in who plays any character, good guy, bad guy, whoever, they always gave it their all. While it was humorous, it was always done seriously. Um, what should always be done, I guess, for comedy, you know, uh, of this nature, you know, play it seriously so that when there's jokes and stuff said or done, done so seriously, it's funnier. You know, of course, it are times in comedies where it could be quite goofy it or and it makes sense for people to play it goofy and not serious but you know with this film you know it really helps um it, this movie is just fantastic from beginning to end uh, the show is too you know I know as the series went on for their show the quality kind of declined but still an entertaining show from beginning to end i i always enjoyed the show i've always enjoyed this film since i saw it and i always will uh while this movie may not be my first batman film i ever saw it's cool to see uh, my first batman uh to be to have his own feature length film uh, that's just really cool uh, uh, for me at least um, I don't know about any of you but uh, if you have any memories of this movie uh, be it you saw this if you were around in the 60s and you saw this on the big screen or you saw it later in life like me uh, where you did see like reruns of the show, and then you saw the movie. Um, what did you think of the movie? Do you enjoy the film? Do you believe it ha is still in tone with the show? Or do you think it isn't completely in tone with the show to a degree? And maybe uh, uh, it deviated to a degree. Um, I don't think so personally, but hey, maybe somebody out there thinks it does, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, if you want, let me know. And, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry about the beginning and talking about all that stuff with the other Batman films, but I have wanted to talk about this movie and the other four uh, movies, Batman films, for quite some time. It's been a while, and I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it finally. Um, and... Yeah, these are movies that I've seen for so many years. I love, I love these movies. Um, even some of the in the four movies, <laughs> even some of the later ones, there are some good stuff about about those movies, and I'll get to those when I get into the the core four. Um, so, until next time, I hope 
all of you have a great day, have a great weekend, have a great week, and I will see you all next time.